What's up everybody, JJ here, and today we're going to be reviewing the TiVo Up Tarantula Pro. And before you click away thinking this is just another 3D printer review, and a lot of those videos are pretty similar, today I'm going to take the video to explain to you 3D printer safety, and a lot of things this printer did wrong are great examples of what you should do better or differently or what to look out for on your own 3D printer. But first off, this video is sponsored by the website Made the Best. It's an online retailer similar to Amazon or AliExpress. You can buy online. A lot of 3D printers are listed on there. That's why they've sponsored several of my videos. If you're looking for a 3D printer, check them out. They might have a better price than where you were thinking about buying it anyway. And usually I do have some coupons in the description down below of these videos. Might help you out get an even better deal on a 3D printer. So back to this printer and why it's such a weird one. First off, this branding TiVo Up is a new company. It's a conglomerate between TiVo and Homer's. They were two separate 3D printer makers and they've come together to make this new machine. Well, it's not a new machine. It's a lot of rebranding of older machines they both made. So it does make it a little confusing. TiVo Tarantula is an older printer. There was a Tarantula Pro made by TiVo and this is the TiVo Up Tarantula Pro. And I'm really just talking about this one here. I can't speak to those other printers, how good they are. I've seen good reviews on those, but we're talking about this one today. So the specs to begin with are pretty standard. Standard build volume, 235, 235, 250 millimeters. Standard glass bed, a Bowden style extruder. And I think the best way to sum up this printer is to compare it to a very similar printer I've reviewed. This is the Artillery Hornet. So immediately you'll start to see similarities between these printers. The design style they both went with is very similar. And I'm not sure which one came first or who is copying the other one, but half of the 3D printing market looks very much the same. So copying a design style look, that's half of the 3D printers on the market right now. So we're not arguing about that. I think they both are sleek, unique looking printers and I do like uniqueness. The TiVo Up decided to go with metal. This is all metal on here. And this is all plastic on the Artillery Hornet. And on face value, you might think, a metal design would be better than a plastic design, but that's not the case here. This metal is very thin, very flexible. You can bend things in and out of place. This plastic is very solid, very secure, thicker in places where it needs to be thicker, very rigid. You're not going to bend things out of the way. It's just a really solid design because it's nice, thick plastic. The next thing to talk about is build quality. It's something you can tell between a well-built printer and a poorly built printer. Grab the edge of your bed, wiggle it up and down. This one, very solid. This one has a lot of wiggle room to it. That's probably gonna show up in your prints. And I have tried tightening everything down here, making it grip the rails a little bit better. Nothing I've done has fixed it fully. The next thing to try wiggling is your X-axis gantry. Try wiggling it up and down. So this one has some bounce, but it's not bouncing side to side. It's bouncing up and down together. There's not much rotational movement on this X gantry, which is good, get you really good consistent prints. This one on the other hand has a lot of wiggle on the, a lot of rotational wiggle on this X gantry. The design here, it isn't gripping things correctly. The tightness and everything isn't correct. And I've tried going through and tightening up these screws, getting the wheels to grip even harder. I just can't get it as good as this one was right out of the box. So the mechanical build of this printer, I just feel like isn't as high of quality as a lot of other printers I've tested out. This one was really cheap. This one's even more expensive and it feels way cheaper in the assembly of it. So I think we should cover just chronologically the assembly and getting this up and working process because there were so many issues along the way that maybe you might run into. First off, I've never had a cable die on me. This is a standard AC to AC plug. You probably have one on your PC. Every printer runs on one. Regular printers run on this. A lot of things run on this style of plug. They're extremely common and basic. This one died on me. Super weird. I was running initial testing and I turned the printer off and turned it back on and nothing worked. So then I went through and checked all the connections, checked the fuses, and still everything looked fine. Should have been turning on. I tried out just a different cable and then I realized how much different they feel. Like a regular cable has a little bit of heft to it. The cable is a bit stiffer. This one is extremely flexible, fairly short and really lightweight. And then I put a different cable and it started working fine. So this cable is dead. I've never had that happen. And so it's pretty bad. <laughs> so if you do have that issue, maybe try a better AC power cable. I luckily had several laying around 
And so that's how I got it to turn on again. My next issue was leveling the bed, which sounds weird. I've leveled so many print beds. I was really confused at my abilities to print anymore. It was just so angled. I couldn't get the back side low enough and the front side high enough to make it level. I even tried lowering the Z height, all the things you normally do when leveling a print bed. This one was super weird. And then I realized underneath there's these four metal arms that are holding your four corners and those arms were bent all out of shape. So then I removed the print bed, bent those metal arms back into shape and they're so flexible you can just easily bend them with your hand, bent them all into a closer to flat, just eyeball flat, put it back on, and then that started working. That shouldn't happen. No printer should bend out a place like that out of shipping. So once I bent it back, reassembled everything, the bed was level, we're good to go. Next up, I tried to start my first test print. It's a basic cube, the most basic of basic test prints on a 3D printer, and the printer kept turning off. All the jostling of it, it kept randomly turning off. So next up, decided to flip the printer over to see if we could check out what's underneath here. Maybe something was burned out, looked damaged. I don't know, I wasn't sure what I would find, and I was terrified with what I did find. So this is what the underside of most 3D printers look like. It's pretty good looking down here. The cable management is honestly quite good, better than a lot of other printers I've seen. But the big issue I found right here on the power supply. So this is where your 120 volts come in from the wall, or 220 if you're other places of the world, it goes over here to your power supply. Right now nothing's on, so I'm not gonna shock myself or anything. So right here you got line, neutral, and ground coming from the wall. That's 120 volts. The line screw was not screwed down. So these were just loose wires in here that were sometimes making connection and powering the machine. And sometimes when the printer was jostling around, they would just come loose. That's 120 volts. If that comes out and touches the side of your printer, you could either have a big spark from 120 to ground and hopefully some breakers turn things off or you could have the chassis be charged to 120 volts. That is a dangerous risk. 120 volts can kill you if it arcs through your heart. Really important to be safe with high voltage things like that. Down here V minus V plus that's 24 volts across that and it feeds up here to the main board of your printer. This is where all the brains happens on your printer. One of these wires, I go in here and jostle wires around to make sure everything is has a solid connection, nothing's gonna come loose from the oscillations of a printer. Pretty standard test I do. And this one just broke off. One of the power in wires and was floating out there. That's 24 volts, just live, hanging out. Nothing was on, so it was fairly safe. But it's just really bad to see a crimped wire being crimped so poorly that it could break from a slight finger jiggle. The next unique thing in here is this solid state relay. Most printers don't have a solid state relay because they have a DC powered bed. This one has an AC powered bed. So 120 volts gets fed through this solid state relay and directly to your bed to heat it up. Benefits would be your print bed will heat up very quickly, which is nice, but there are some downsides and risks that come along with using an AC powered bed. The big risk here is that when solid state relays fail, they normally fail in a closed circuit way. So your print bed will continue to get 120 volts and nothing your printer does can turn it off. That is sort of a fire risk because nothing will tell your print bed to turn off. It'll keep heating as hard and as fast as it goes until it melts, catches fire, something else happens. Hopefully you're nearby when that happens. So you may ask what are the benefits of an AC powered bed? And the real benefit is it heats up faster. This one takes, I think it was about a minute to get up to temperature versus a DC powered bed takes at least a few minutes. And there is one safety workaround that covers all of those risks if they put in a thermal fuse. A thermal fuse is a little device that if it reaches a certain temperature, it opens the circuit and nothing will flow in there. And so normally you'd have them rated at like 130 Celsius or somewhere that your print bed should not reach. And so if it ever does reach those temperatures, it knows something's gone wrong. I'm just gonna cut everything out. So we're gonna open this up now and see if we can find a thermal fuse. Hopefully we can. If not, I'm probably not gonna use this printer anymore. And for strain relief, they just have a bunch of high temperature silicone. That's another sort of risk here of if these wires get severed, it is in this nice sheath, but if something gets severed or opened, you've got 120 volts swinging around in this wire on the back of your printer. This is a little thermistor on the end that's measuring the temperature. And then the red wires are soldered directly onto the board right there. So you can see here, the two red wires are soldered directly 
onto the heating pad and there's nothing in between, no fuse. A fuse should look something like this. So I think that just about wraps it up. With no thermal fuse like that, I would not recommend anyone use this printer or buy it. Even after I cut it open like that, even if I did find a thermal fuse, I wouldn't reuse it myself. Cutting into a thermal bed like that can be bad. And I sort of knew going into it, I wasn't gonna do that. And there were a lot of other issues with this printer. The menu system wasn't great. There were a lot of weird, was kind of a confusing menu system. Not the best I've used. This one is very similar LCD with a scroll wheel. And this one, I like how it's laid out. This one has a bunch of extra menu options that don't do anything, but we didn't cover that in this video. So fine. I guess the print quality was fine after I did get everything up and running, but that took me three or four hours. And I have a lot of experience putting together and assembling and working on 3D printers. And if it takes me that long, a new beginner would not recommend this printer. Stay away from it. This one's cheaper and way better. I would say just go get this one. And you can find it on Made the Best. They do have this one and I will try to find you a coupon and link it in the description down below. Well, if you've enjoyed this video, enjoyed seeing me do something you shouldn't do to your 3D printer, cutting it open in ways that are totally destructive. I mean, I was planning in the end anyways to take this apart and use all these parts on some other project I was thinking of. Normally I try to resell a printer because if it's a fine printer and I just don't need it, I can sell it on to someone else so that they can use it. I didn't really want to hand off something like this with all of its issues to another person to have to deal with. I was planning pretty early on, I decided I would just take it apart and all these parts are still fine. There's just, I mean, all the issues we found in this video. If you've enjoyed this video and want to see more, hitting that like and subscribe button is the best way to help me out and let me know this is the type of content you enjoy watching. Now I guess that wraps it up. Go out there, create something amazing today, and I'll see you in the next video.